Hello, welcome. Not here with my quick meta guide for the Retribution Paladin in TBC Classic. As I always say, these videos are primarily trying to demonstrate overview information in the way I wanted to find it as a YouTube consumer, and for this reason, this video is going to have a few sections. First, the basics and PvE, stats, rotation, that kind of thing, and this time we're going to add in some brief coverage of the elephant in the room, Seal of Blood. We'll then finish up the basics with a brief mention on race choice and then move on to the strengths or reasons to play the spec as well as the limitations or reasons why you might not want to play the spec in TBC. I'm going to go over professions after this, no nuggies for guessing who makes an appearance and then we'll finish with a broad PvP overview but for in-depth information on these two final topics I would suggest looking for dedicated guides after checking out this video of course. So. Onto the basics, and I kind of want to get the seal shenanigans out of the way, so I'll start there. There is no sugarcoating it. If Seal of Blood is Horde only in TBC Classic, you will find it very difficult to compete as Alliance in both PvE and PvP compared to Blood Elves, but don't mistake me here. I'm explicitly name checking Blood Elves here because an Alliance Rep Paladin without Seal of Blood isn't suddenly rubbish, it's actually pretty solid as we'll come to see. But to keep things brief, Seal of Blood is quite a bit better on average. It scales better with haste effects, it can break effects such as Polymorph, similar to how Shadow Word Death works. On top of that, Judgment of Blood works off melee hit, which we actually have, whilst Judgment of Command works off spell hit, which we don't have. And the intended downside of losing health is actually a net benefit a lot of the time due to spiritual attunement for Paladins, where you get mana restored based on any healing you receive. If there is demand for a deep dive on this topic, I will happily look into doing one. As I've mentioned in the comments for other videos, I plan to do a Dragon Strike deep dive sometime soonish, but outside of that, what I've just said about Seal of Blood is the too long didn't read edition as far as retribution is concerned. So, the elephant is fed, back in the zoo, let's get on to the PvE spec. So there are two specs that are typically taken, usually relating to what buffs you are providing. The default is often 51145 or a variation of this where we grab Divine Strength in the Holy Tree, Kings in the Prot Tree and then in the Ret Tree we're taking the usual suspects, Benediction, Improved Crusader, one or two points in Improved Judgment but one is enough, Conviction for Crit, Seal of Command typically as well no matter whether you're Blood Elf or Alliance, usually you just pick it up, two or three points in Pursuit of Justice, three in Crusade as most bosses fit the types, then we take all the remaining talents below aside from Divine Purpose. This spec can be tweaked as I mentioned due to buff provision. For example you can switch things around to 5, 10, 46 at the expense of Kings for a third point in pursuit, but the main different build that you will encounter is one that goes for improved might and it's going to take away some points from protection and potentially from pursuit or one of the judgement points and push it into 5 out of 5 improved might. Typically though, you're probably going to look to your holy paladin in the raid to provide improved might, so no worries there usually. As far as stats go, Rep Paladin has a pretty interesting situation. In terms of per point value, Armor Pen and Haste are typically going to be the stats you're looking for alongside your standard strength or attack pal. However, as with most melee specs, expertise is very strong, we also want to be hit capped of course, but on top of that, despite being the lowest value per point, crit and agility are very important due to the vengeance talent and its uptime. Because of vengeance, we can't just ignore crit, and the sim tool is going to start spitting out a really high value for crit if we are sacrificing it all for stronger stats such as armor pen, haste, expertise, etc. You need a solid amount of crit even if you're attacking often due to haste or haste effects in a raid encounter to build and maintain three stacks of vengeance as quickly as possible with as little downtime as you can manage. Typically this means that you're going to look for around 25 to 30 percent crit or more inside raids because that will make sure that you've got vengeance working pretty nicely. Interestingly the value of haste and armor pen is also influenced by your faction. As I mentioned, Seal of Blood scale was better with Haste than Seal of Command, and as such, Horde Paladins are going to 
typically value haste a little bit higher, it will remain the best per point stat for longer than compared to Alliance Paladins. Alliance Paladins will very much want Armor Pen over haste, but both are great, obviously, because Seal of Command doesn't take advantage of haste as much as Seal of Blood does. This is then made a little bit more complex by the armor of the boss. At lower armor values, such as 6200 or below, armor pen is just the best stat. Likewise, because armor pen does not suffer diminishing returns, it will at some point inevitably become your best stat per point, regardless of faction, as more becomes available in your gear, assuming your crit and haste values aren't completely trash. 9% hit is the cap that we want to get no matter what, but it's not too bad in an optimized composition. We're getting 3% from Precision, we can get another 3% from Improved Verifier if there's a Boomy, so we're only looking at 3-6% to hit from gear. As mentioned, Expertise is obviously a strong stat, and we do have a pseudo target of 6.5% dodge reduction, but given the rarity of Expertise and just the lack of good Expertise items, it's often unrealistic to attain this. Your sim tool will value it very highly though, as with all melee. So we have the stats to blast, but how are we actually going to do the blasting? Well, rep paladins get crusader strike in TBC, and essentially the DPS rotation is the same as classic, just with crusader strike kept on cooldown as a priority, followed by keeping judgment on cooldown. Essentially your life will revolve around this, whilst trying to maintain judgment of crusader on the boss, or the main target rather, for the holy debuff, and on top of this, you're going to be maintaining your damage shield. Remember, Judgment's not on the global cooldown, so you can macro these two things together in terms of reapplying your seal immediately after you judge. We're going to be filling any remaining globals with Exorcism if the target is undead or demon, or if we have loads of mana, we can use Consecration. However, for both of these spells, we never want to delay any of the main rotation mentioned just before. If you're low on mana, completely ignore Consecration, it'd be a disaster to delay anything due to overuse of mana. Min-maxes will chew Dark Runes to be able to fill these globals as often as possible, whether they're an undead, demon, or just anything else. Finally, I'm going to cover race choice briefly. Obviously, as stated earlier, Blood Elf is the optimal choice for overall passing, if you're into that, unless the seal, seal situation is changed. For Alliance, it's hard to look past the 5 expertise gain to 2 handed swords and maces that humans get. Draenei are an attractive option for party damage. This is because whilst you will always have a Draenei Enhancement Shaman in your group, sh Shamans provide 1% spell hit via the racial, but for Paladins the racial is actually 1% melee hit for your party. As such, Draenei may potentially be the most raid DPS because you're providing 1% hit for four other people and yourself. I wouldn't want to rule it out, but I suspect even with this considered, five expertise from humans is stronger, and it's definitely stronger for you individually at the very least. Also, having the racial be two weapon choices, as opposed to a very narrow singular weapon type choice, is a real benefit of this racial too. It's not hard to make sure that you're wielding either a sword or a mace for the entire game. If you intend to PvP as Ret, Alliance have a choice between Dwarves' stone form and Perception for humans. As I've said in other videos, Perception loses quite a bit of value as an unstealth user, but it's still a strong tool because there's just a lot of rogues around. Considering this, I'm not going to be comfortable suggesting which is best, but feel free to comment below if you feel exceptionally strongly on this. For me, I would probably lean towards Perception in the case of Paladin. Now we've got all the basics out of the way, the key question remains, what's the appeal? Well, it's a, it was a tough one to write actually in terms of different points. I think the main reason to play Retribution and the thing that's good about it is a number of factors that build into one key reason. Firstly, Retribution is far from the meme it is in Classic. Whilst you won't top meters amongst similarly dedicated competition, you do some very solid damage, especially as you progress to the late game, as with most melee specs. Whilst Blood Elf is higher damage unless Blizzard changes things, both Alliance and Horde Paladins will be quite middle of the pack, always respectable. On top of this, you obviously provide a Paladin Blessing which is important, but on top of this, you are providing a ton more threat to the prop Paladin in the opener 
because you can provide the Judgment of the Crusader as the boss engages, and that does help out a lot. You also give 2% more damage to your party, which is a very modest buff, but a buff nonetheless. And on merit alone, you are the third paladin in the 25. It's not like classic where you stack holy paladins because they're just better. Another thing is that you often get to use your full kit. Karazhan, Magtheridon, Leotheris the Blind in Serpent Shrine Cavern, and the majority of tier 6 and Sunwell are demons or undead. Because of this you get to use the spells like Exorcism and to a lesser extent Holy Wrath on many raid knights. Whilst neither of these spells scale with attack power to Wrath of the Leech King, all the things I've mentioned thus far amount to genuine immersion in the class fantasy. I'm assuming if you're considering Rep Paladin, you're probably a fan of the idea of being a Holy Crusader, bonking demons and other infidels into the ground. So to you I say that no longer will a lack of usable skills, depressing performance, or a lack of practical utility break your immersion. If you embrace the idea of Rep Paladin, you're going to enjoy yourself in TBC. I'm very sure of that. In terms of different points, I'm not sure there's much to add. Usually I highlight a key fight where the spec does really well. Unfortunately for melee, this typically is the same encounter. It's Kill Jaden. Melee across the board want to be stationary and just zugzugging, right? And they don't really get to do that on the majority of encounters, especially early on. But Samuel Plateau is a lot kinder and Kill Jaden in particular is a fight where all of the melee specs do really well. But this brings me to the first negative of the Rep Paladin, and it's the obvious one that plagues many specs. It's a melee spec. A large portion of the content is particularly unfriendly to melee. I don't want to beat a dead horse because I do think the melee hell that people are prophesizing is a little overstated. But one thing you cannot escape is that there is only one spot for Rep Paladin in an optimal setup, and if Classic is anything to go by, the community often desire optimal setups, regardless of whether it's necessary or matches any sort of perceived difficulty. If Rep Paladins are unnaturally popular on your server for some reason, you may find it difficult to get a raid spot, but in a similar sense, most raids will want one Rep Paladin, and a lack of Rep Paladins could maybe lead to some interesting opportunities for you. Swings and roundabouts, really. Outside of the limited raid spots, there isn't much else to dislike. The gameplay is solid, you're always doing pretty well on both single target and AoE as far as melee are concerned. You're not a hunter or warlock by any means at any stage of the expansion, but you're never just flat out bad. Perhaps in terms of heroics and such, you may want to consider being a prop paladin. That's just because prop paladins and five mans are like role playing a supermodel. Prop paladin just does super super well in five mans and finding a group and all that stuff is just so simple as a prop paladin. But overall, there really isn't much to dislike, as I mentioned. If you can deal with the limited raid spots, and you like the idea of rep paladin, I think you're going to enjoy yourself. As always, I'm going to begin the profession section with the standard round of applause that we've become accustomed to for our supreme leader, leatherworking. 20 of 25 raiders at least, will want to be leatherworking unless there are some changes announced by Blizzard in these min-max comps. As such, it's hard not to bring it up each time, even though you've heard it this a million times, I'm sure, especially if you've watched any of my other guides. Blacksmithing provides a lot of value, Lionheart Executioner and its lesser versions are very strong until you are clearing the latter bosses of Mount Hijal and Black Temple. To preempt a question, yes, Lionheart is optimal, but fortunately for PvPers, going the Mace Smith for Storm Herald in Arena is not as big a downgrade as it is for an Arms Warrior, because the Arms Warrior real pain there is losing sword specialization. Ultimately though, once you reach items like Cataclysm's Edge from Archimond, the value of blacksmithing drops off a cliff, and you will likely drop the profession entirely. But I do encourage you to go for it in the early game, because it's a very big boost, and melee specs really do need to keep themselves as competitive as possible in those early raids especially. If your uncle is a professional tunnel digger and you do indeed achieve the great escape, you should consider the usual suspects of enchanting and jewel crafting. Stats on rings is a solid boost, whilst jewel crafting provides the very best neck in the game by a big margin for you. 
Enchanting until you get Biss Rings and then switching to Jewel Crafting for that Biss Neck is the play for the true Min Maxes. The JC only gems though are a solid benefit until tier 6, so it's not too bad to remain Jewel Crafting throughout if you prefer not to switch around. Finally, we are on to PvP. And I didn't mean to be a pessimist when I went into this, but when I first looked into this area, I kind of expected a ghost town at the top of the private server ladders as far as retribution is concerned. And whilst they aren't super common by any means, you can clearly do well with a few compositions. In both 2s and 3s, you will want a resto shaman with you. The synergy between these two specs is very high. I mean, Wind Fury is the obvious one, right? Without a Rest of Shaman though, you should expect a steep drop off in your viability, if you will, in terms of arena. Because of this, you're probably going to lock in with a Rest of Shaman almost always for twos, and in threes, you're going to probably want to grab an Arms Warrior who has similar synergies with Rest of Shaman, but adds that all important Mortal Strike effect and consistent pressure to what the twos comp already does really well in terms of burst and utility. As you can see, both Ret Resto Shaman and Ret Resto Shaman Warrior have put up some very solid standings on Endless and Atlantis's Karazhan server. For some of the same reasons Resto Shaman pairs well with Paladin, you can do some double DPS shenanigans with Enhance in 2s and do the same with a healer in 3s, but from what I can see, Resto Shamans really are your best bet for Arena across the board. On that note, we are at the end of this video. Overall, it's a really solid spec. It really surprised me. I was expecting full meme if you weren't a Blood Elf, and potentially also a hard time in PvP, but neither of these are true. With that said though, thanks for all the support so far, and I hope to see you next time, hopefully, in your notifications.